Hello everyone, hope everybody's doing great. And uh, for this video, I want to talk about something that's really, really big, huge question, and that question is, how do we know that God exists? Now, that's a question that atheists will ask, people that believe in evolution will ask that question, to Christians, how do you know that God exists? And this is something that's very important, even for a Christian, that if somebody asks you a question like this, I want you to be able to give them a solid answer to be able to, you know, give them something that they can take home and think about. Instead of just saying, you know, something that, you know, comes off the top of your head that doesn't make any sense. Even though you might be a true Christian that believes in God, I want you to have a solid answer to, to give somebody if they ask you a question like this. Now, for this question, there are, you know, a couple of arguments that exist out there that really can prove the existence of God. And the three main ones are the ontological argument, the theological argument, and the cosmological argument. And the first two I mentioned are kind of really hard to understand and hard to grasp. So the one that I mainly stick to is the cosmological argument. And that basically just talks about how the universe had to have a creator. There's no other way to look at it. The universe had to have a creator. Now, if you look at what the secular world says about how the universe began, the main theory out there is the Big Bang. Now, you know, I went to college, I graduated with a science degree at a, from a secular school, so this is what I was fed all the time. I never believed the word of it, but I was fed it all the time. So I, you know, I got a good understanding of what they were trying to sell to me, but it's, it just never made sense to me. Because for an explosion to happen, you gotta have some ingredients. Like dynamite doesn't just explode by itself. You have to have all the other ingredients in there and you got like the fuse. Now, if the Big Bang is what caused the universe, what caused the explosion? What made the explosion happen? What made the matter that was there, the atoms and all the stuff that is there to be able to create this explosion? Now, if, with the Big Bang Theory, you can just keep going in this loop that you'll never find an answer to and that makes it illogical. Now, he said the Big Bang created the universe. What put the stuff there to make the Big Bang happen? Then you can say, what put that stuff there to put this there to make the Big Bang happen? And you can say, what put that there to put this there to put that there to make the Big Bang happen? And you just get into this argument, this circle that you will never, ever get yourself out of. So, where are we? You're in this circle. How do you get out of it? The only way to get out of it is God. Because... With God, you have an uncaused cause that created the entire universe. Without, if you keep getting in that circle, you get into an illogical argument, and that is just, it makes no sense. If you keep going in that circle and keep going in that circle, you never find your way out. But with God, if you put God at the beginning, God created the entire universe. Now, the main question that they'll throw back at me is, well, what made God? All that'll do is you get into another circular argument that makes no sense. In order for this world, this universe to be here, there had to be something that existed outside of time that has no cause, that has no beginning, has no end, is all-powerful to be able to create this universe that we see. Now... You can look up at the stars, see how beautiful they are, and look and just see the vast, infinite, infiniteness, if that's even a word, of our universe, and know that a God had to create that. It couldn't just happen. The For that to happen, it would be such a random occurrence, and I can't, you know, it's really hard for me to understand how atheists see this, because it would have to be so random for that to happen, for this to, the whole universe to be created, and I can't base my existence off of that. I don't know about anybody else, but I just cannot do that. So I look to God. And you can look at a scripture to back that up. One that I have in mind right now is Romans 1.20. And it said, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And you have a bunch of Psalms, like Psalms 8, like Psalms 19, Talking about where David's looking up, he's seeing the universe and he's saying, what is man that God is even mindful of him? So it's just, 
and, I, and, if they, and if I didn't make sense about these arguments, you can Google. I want you to go Google the cosmological argument for God's existence. And so you can look at it and have something to read so you can really get an understanding of it. Because that pretty much shows that you need a God to create this universe that we live in. And if you have any questions for me, you want me to clarify something, go over something that you have a question about, just leave a uh, question in the comments section or whatever, and I'll do my best to get back to you and answer the question the best I can from this great book we have right here, the supernatural book we have. So I thank you all for watching. Hope you have a blessed day.